Final Fantasy XIV's game director talks about the prospects of going free to play, and Magic the Gathering Arena touts some of their new events this week. All that and more, I'm Ethos, and this is Free to Play Weekly. First off in the news this week, Magic the Gathering Arena announced this past week that its core set 2009 draft event has rotated out, but in its stead you can still partake in the Guilds of Ravnica's best of one event. You'll have to pay either 750 gems or 5,000 to participate, which may be a little bit pricey. As a player of Arena myself, paying 5 bucks for the chance to win is kind of hard to swallow. The good thing is, is that you do get to keep every card that you get as a result of this draft, which can be used in any of the other additional game modes. Not only that, but this past weekend, they also introduced a limited time game mode called Singleton. Now, this format will run you 100 gems or 500 gold, and it forces you to build a deck with using no more than one of any card, except for basic lands, of course. And you'll play until you accumulated either 7 wins or 3 losses, and this event will run until October the 19th. You can read more about these events and additional patch changes on the Magic the Gathering Arena site. In other news, Tencent is ready to reveal some of its plans for Ring of Elysium's future. The company set out a press release this past week with a summary of the first three stages of content updates. The first one's pretty simple and it includes optimization, anti-cheat measures, and of course, good news for Russian and Portuguese players, additional language support. In the second stage, Tencent will be working on features, overhauling character animation, character customization, and more. And finally, in the third stage, Tencent plans on launching European servers. Now, the name of these servers will be revealed, of course, at a later date. Uh, players can also expect a revamped version of the Tropical Island map from the game's Thailand beta test as well in Stage 3. Moving on, for those of you who play Path of Exile, I'm pretty sure you're aware of the Delve content drop recently. Now, if you've played it extensively, you've probably noticed that there were some changes over the past few weeks. As technical director Jonathan Rogers explained that those changes were needed to balance the rate at which players explored the infinite mind and required tweaks in a few different directions, some of which quote unquote led to players being really unhappy. Now Grinding Gear Games thinks it's all sorted out now, though the need to make these changes while the delve mode was alive was fraught with a little bit of peril. As Rogers put it, the seat of the pants balancing was really frustrating. If you change stuff like that it loses trust of the community and you have to build it back up again. Yeah, it was quite painful, but thankfully, we're okay now. Fortunately, Path of Exile has nearly six years of goodwill built up with its community that it can afford to make adjustments like this without too much trouble. It also helps that Delve is meant to stand apart from the main game, so even if it does have issues, it's temporary content that will be removed soon. Now, that being said, games that make radical changes to core mechanics, even if they seem like the right ideas from the design perspective, uh, it can still anger fans to the point of causing a max exodus. And if your game is new, even if it's not officially released, this could really sink it, despite good intentions, but I highly doubt that this small misstep is really going to affect the overall health of the game's community, and it may even strengthen it down the road. And speaking of affecting your game community, the dev team at NeoWiz took some time to reflect on their game Bless Online's early access period, with what went right and what went wrong, and um... <sighs> Yeah. So NeoWiz stressed that Early Access was a quote-unquote chance to continue engaging with the player base, and that the game was quote-unquote not finished, being that their goal was to gather more feedback from NA and EU audiences. Now one of the pieces of feedback clearly didn't include the frequent realization that Early Access is often viewed as a little different from a launch, and that if you're paying for a product, you expect it to be more or less finished. So you see, according to the developers, the issue is that players didn't understand what Early Access was. Neo was attempted to communicate this as such, but large swaths of the player base ignored it because that's, well, how it is in the West. Now perhaps that should have been gauged prior to early access launch, rather than figuring out in, uh, <clears throat> retrospect, huh? And finally, one of the last holdouts among MMOs that requires a subscription is Final Fantasy XIV. Everyone has been curious to see if Final Fantasy XIV would ever go free to play, even the game's game director, Naoki Yoshida, aka Yoshi P. Now, Yoshi P acknowledged this a year ago this month, but now Yoshida is singing a different tune. In an interview with Korean website Invrin, Yoshida answered several wide ranging questions about the game, covering update 4.3, translations, and class balance. So, in the interview, he says this about the chance of Final Fantasy XIV going free to play now. Absolutely not. It's a business after all, and we look at profits through games. However, we consider the close trust between developers and players than simply trying to maximize the profit in a short period of time. In a developer's perspective, we think that a quick profit is not the right way. 
Even if Final Fantasy XIV is making sizable profits surprisingly well, we do not want to push players to reach further in their wallet. Instead, it would be better to encourage at least two to three times the population with lowered spending per individual, establishing a healthy continuation of three to ten years in sight. Hence, we have no plans at playing free-to-play at all. He continues, If we look at free-to-play and its profit model, we're gonna walk the same plank these social games in Japan have walked on, and we're definitely going to avoid that in the first place by not doing it at all. Global Final Fantasy XIV is incredibly profitable for us right now, and we want to assure you that we're holding the same future as we promised to adventurers when they first started. So TLDR is pretty much that it's probably never going to happen, at least as of right now. Still, this interview was very interesting to read through and hear some of his thoughts on how free-to-play games can often push players to reach further in their wallet. It seems that Yoshi P has enough control over this particular product that he's able to convince the higher-ups at Square Enix that the current way that they do business is the best and that there are no plans to change things. And unlike some developers who insist that their games will never go free to play, I actually do believe him. And that leads us to the question of the week. Since we're talking about free to play models this week and developers thoughts on them and other aspects of their games, let me ask you guys this. What games do you feel have fair free to play models? Let me know in the comments section below. And that's it for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Don't forget to check out MMOBomb.com for giveaways and the latest news. My name is Ethos, and I'll catch you guys next week.